hi guys welcome back to my channel once again in this video i'm going to be showing you how to cut this jumpsuit this video this tutorial is about the cutting so how i cut the pants the top the facing and the collar so if you're interested in it kindly watch till the end i'll be uploading the sewing video very soon so i used three yards of fabric for this jumpsuit and then i folded it into two so these are the measurements i'm going to be using my waist divided by four hip divided by four knee by two i have my trouser length and then i have my crouch depth which is the hip divided by four first thing i'm going to be doing is to measure the length of my trouser and it is 39 so i'll be adding two inches to the 39 for folding so the length is now going to be 41 so from that lower part i'm marking 41 inches up 41 inches i'll be folding two inches in after marking, I'll be using my straight ruler to draw a straight line. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to measure 3 inches in from the center. 3 inches in from the center. So just mark 3 inches in like I'm doing. And then connect it or connect the points with your ruler to get a straight line. So that upper line becomes my waistline. That is where I'm going to be starting with the work. So I'm going to start with my crouch depth, which is 10. We get it by dividing the hip by 4. So whatever your hip is, divide it by 4 and then from the waist, mark down. So from the waist, I'm marking 10.5 inches down. So after marking, I'll be drawing in a straight line at that part. At this point, I'm cross-checking because I realized the lines weren't that straight. So I corrected it before joining it together. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to put in the hip measurement on the crouch line. The hip measurement on the crouch line. So the hip is 42, 42 by 4 is 10.5. So whatever you use for the crouch depth, you are using the same thing for the hip measurement. So I'm going to be marking 10.5 inches. You are starting on that line. That three inches I marked is for another purpose. So I'm starting from that line I marked. So I'm marking the 10.5 over there after marking the 10.5 on the hip or crouch line i'm going to be marking that same 10.5 on the waist line then i'll be joining the points together so on that same crouch line i'm going to be going out by two inches so mark two inches out and then I'll be marking two inches up. Two inches up. Yes, so two inches out and then two inches up. After that, I'll be drawing a curve at that point or that area. So I'll be using my French curve for that. Or you can use your free hand for it if you can. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to come in by one inch from the waist, the center front of the waist. I'm coming in by one inch and then I'll be connecting it to that point. So if you don't have this curve, you can use your straight ruler for that. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to put in my waist measurements. So my waist is 29. 
divided by 4 I had 7.25 so from that new line I'm going to be marking my 7.25 7.25 that is what i have over there then i'm going to connect from that point to that point next thing i'm going to be doing is to divide from that point to that point into two so it's 10.5, 10.5 by 2 is 5.25, so that is what I have. So I'll be marking that 5.25 from that crunch line to the hem of the trousers. Then I'll be making it or connecting the points together to get a straight line. So this part didn't really show in the video, it wasn't clear by then. The two inches folding I added at the hem, I went ahead to mark it. So I just marked that two inches so that I get my 39 inches for the trouser. So after marking that 39 inches, from the crotch line to that 39 inches, I'm going to divide it by two. I have 28. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So I'll be marking 14 from the 39 inches, the length of the trouser up. So after marking the 14 inches, I'll be going up by 2 inches again. 2 inches. After marking the 14 inches, you're coming up by 2 inches to get your knee line. You can decide to mark your knee line so that you ignore this part. So my knee is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So that is what I'm going to be marking on the knee line. So that is the knee line. So that 9 inches I have, I'm going to be dividing that 9 inches by 2. 9 inches by 2 which is 4.5 so I'll be marking 4.5 on each side of the center line so that after marking 4.5 on each side when I finish and then measure I'll have 9 inches in total so mark 4.5 on each side of the center line just like I have done and I'll be marking that same 9 inches at the hem at the hem of the trouser or around the ankle of the trouser so i'm marking 4.5 on each side as well so that when i finish i'll get nine inches so i'll be connecting from that point to that point with my ruler and then i'll be doing that at the other side as well so you can see i'm using the trouser curve for that part and then at the lower part i'll be using the straight side of the ruler for that part as well next thing i'm going to be doing is to shape the trouser so from the hip to the hem or the ankle area i'm going to be shaping it so at the ankle area i'm going to be coming out by four inches four inches at the side and then at the other side as well i'll be going out by four inches So 4 inches on both sides, if you want it to be wider and you have more fabric, you can decide to add up. So after that, I'm going to be connecting from that point to the 4 inches I just marked. So that I can get the shape of the trouser or the lower part of the jumpsuit. I'll be doing same at the other side as well from that point. 
I'll be connecting to the 4 inches I marked out as well. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to add 1.5 inches to the waist of the trousers. 1.5 inches to the side seam of the waist of the trousers and I'm going to be adding extra half inch to it for the stitching of the center front. So I'm adding extra one inch to it so in all i added two inches to the side of the front part of the trousers and then i'm adding half inch to the waist to the upper part of the waist for stitching since it's a jumpsuit i need that half inch for stitching so at this point i'm done with the front and then i'll go ahead and then cut out I'll be using that same pattern to cut out the back. Like I said earlier, I used three yards of fabric for this jumpsuit. So if you are thicker, you can use about four yards of fabric. So I'm done cutting out then i'll be laying it on another fabric which is unfold and then cut out the back so this is the fabric i just laid down you can see it is folded into two so i'll be putting the front parts or laying the front parts of the trouser on top of it just like this then work on the back of the trouser so the first thing I'm going to be doing is to extend the waist line. And then I'll be adding 2 inches to the waist. Then somewhere midpoint the waist, I'm going to be adding up. So you measure and then find somewhere at the midpoint or the middle and then mark. Then after marking, I'll be adding 1.5 inches to that part as well. So all I did was to add 1.5 inches there and then 2 inches at the waist. Next, I'll be working on the back or the crouch area for the back and then I'll be adding 4 inches to that part. Note, if you are thicker or you are caviar, you can make it about 5 inches because I am about size 12 that's why I'm adding 4 inches but then if you are bigger you can add extra 1 inch to that point and then draw a curve from the waist to the crouch area like I have done next thing I'm going to be doing is to raise the back by 1.5 inches the center back I'm raising it by 1.5 inches and then I'll be connecting it to the side of the trouser. So at the knee and then the ankle area, I'm going to be adding 2 inches at those points. So 2 inches at the ankle, sorry, at the knee area and then 2 inches at the ankle area. Then I'll be connecting it to the crouch area. Next, I'm going to be adding to the waist is one inch for that. This one inch is actually not needed. But then to be on a safer side, I'm adding it so that in case I lose fabric, it will replace it, but it's not really needed. But then I'll advise you to add up. So after that, I am done with the back and then I'm cutting out at this point. So like I said, that's one inch at the waist is not really needed. But then I added it to be on a safer side so that when I hold the dart, it will replace it. 
Next thing I'm going to be doing is to cut out the pocket. So I folded this fabric into two and then I'm going to fold it into two again. I want to cut two pockets at a go. So I'm folding it into two again. So the length I use for this pocket is 10 inches but then I'll advise you to use about 13 inches because after sewing it became very small. So use 13 inches instead of 10. And then I used a width of 6.5 inches, so you can use about 8 inches for the width as well. So I'll be connecting those points together and then cut out. Before I cut out, I'll be going up by 1 inch at that part and then get the curve for the trouser sorry for the pocket after the curve i'll go ahead and then cut out and that will be all for the trouser part of the jumpsuit at this point i'm going to be working on the top area so i folded this fabric into two i'm going to be using it to cut out the back and these are the measurements i'll be using for the cutting of the top First thing I'm going to be doing is to measure one inch from that upper part down to get my shoulder line. So that line automatically becomes the shoulder line and then I'm marking one inch in again at the center back to get my zip extension. First thing I'm going to be doing is to measure my shoulder to bust measurement and then my shoulder to waist measurement. So my shoulder to bust is 9 inches, so I'll be measuring 9 and then the shoulder to waist is 16, so I'll be marking 16 down there. I'll be repeating the same step at that side as well and then connect with my ruler. So that is my bust line and then that is my waist line. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to divide my bust by 4, then place it on the bust line and then my waist by 4 and then place it on the waist line. So my bust by 4 is 9. You can see I'm starting that 9 from the line I marked, the 1 inch I marked in. We are starting from that point and then my waist is 7.25 inches so i'm marking that as well note you are starting at that line that line in and not the edge of the folded fabric but then the one inch i marked in you are starting on that line so after that i went ahead to connect from the bust to the waist and then at this point i'm going to be placing my nipple to nipple or bust to bust measurements in. My nipple to nipple is 7. I divided it by 2. I had 3.5. So I'm marking 3.5 on the bust and then waistline. After that, I'll be connecting it together with my ruler. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to place half inch on both sides of the center line or the bust to bust line. So that when I finish and then I measure, I'll have one inch in total. So after marking that, I'll be connecting from the bust line to the waist, just like this. So I'll be placing that one inch that allowance at the side. So that when I sew or stitch the dots, I'll still have that excess fabric at the end. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to work on the neckline. So the neck width is 3 inches and then the depth is 1 inch 
for the back so after that i'll be connecting from that point to the other side just like this next i'll be working on the shoulder line my shoulder is 14 i'll be dividing it by two so from that point i'm going to be marking seven inches because 14 divided by two is seven after marking the seven inches i'll be dropping the shoulder by one inch and that seven inches i marked at the shoulder i'll be marking that same seven inches on the bust line and then connect the two points together with my ruler after connecting next thing i'll be doing is to slant the shoulder and then i'm going to be dividing that line into two so i don't really need that division for the back but because of the shaping of the armhole i'm drawing it in or i'm coming in by one inch so that cutting of the armhole will be easy so this is actually done to the front parts of the blouse but then because of the armhole i made it on the back so that that actually starts from the bust line so that excess line i went ahead to clean it next thing i'm going to be doing is to add 1.5 inches to the side seam so 1.5 at the bust line and then the waistline and then I'll go ahead and then connect it with my ruler. At this point, I'm done with the back and then I'll go ahead and then cut out. But then while I was cutting out, I'll be adding half inch seam allowance to the shoulder, the armhole area and then the waistline. I've already added 1.5 inches to the side, so there's no need to add another seam allowance. So next thing I'm going to be doing is to divide the back into two. Since I'll be fixing a zipper at the back. So I'll be using the back to cut out the front, so I'm folding that zipper extension in because I don't need the zip extension at the front part of the blouse. So I'll be folding another fabric into two, then I'll be placing the front, sorry, I'll be placing the back on top of it. So just like this. First thing I'm going to be doing is to extend the neckline of the back to the front or to the fabric. Then I'll be extending the waistline as well. I'm going to be dropping the front by one inch. That will be the neck depth for the front. So one inch and then I'll be marking or connecting it to the neckline of the back. So that first extension I made, I'm going to be canceling it because I don't need it for the back. So what I'm going to be doing is to mark the shoulder area of the back and then raise it up like this and then connect it to the new neckline. Just like this. After that, from the center back line, I'm going to be coming in by 3 inches at the neckline and then on the waistline, I'm going to be coming in by 5 inches. So I'll be connecting the two points together.
so if you feel that three inches is too big you can make it either one or two inches it depends on how big you want the front area to look like so that when you fold it on the excess fabric you get laying down so it depends on how big you want that part to be i initially used three inches but then i'm going to reduce it to two inches so i'm going to be using two inches i'll reconnect that point to the waistline so after sewing i realized if you use three inches it's not going to be that big so you can decide to use the three inches or two inches like i have used if you want it smaller as well you can use the one inch next thing i'm going to be doing is to cut out the excess fabric from it so you can decide to add seam allowance or you can decide to cut it straight like i have done it will still come out nice then i'll be cutting out every other part to get my back since i've already added seam allowances to to the back there is no need to add another to the front so i'm going to be cutting out a little bit of that point so that i know where my center front is so that when i'm sewing or joining it to the trousers i know where my center front is next thing i'm going to be doing is to come down by one inch on the back and then i'm going to be using pins pins to copy the darts from the back to the front part of the top or blouse so just pin the points like I have done and then connect the points together I came down by one inch because the front that starts one inch below the bust line and then on the back it starts exactly on the bust line that is why I marked one inch down before copying the dots to the front so after copying I'm going ahead to draw out the dots on both sides of the front so after copying the dot this is what I have for the back and then this is what I have for the front at this point I'm going to be cutting out the facing for the front so i folded this fabric into two it's a cotton fabric but then i don't know the name you can use satin for that part and then i'm going to be placing the front on top of it like this and then cut out so i'm going to be tracing the neck area the shoulder the center front and then the waist area so remember i made a little notch or a notch at the center front for the front at that point and then i'm going to be marking that part as well so at this point i'm going to be drawing in the shape of the collar so i went in by four inches and then at the shoulder area i went in about three inches so just connect from that point down so this facing is actually big but then to be on the safer side i use that to work so that later i can trim it off after folding or getting the shape of the facing for the front so after cutting out, I'll be fusing it with a medium interfacing. So this is all for the cutting out. I'll be dropping or uploading the sewing video very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified when I drop or upload the next video. Bye.